back to the scheduled program of UX interviews series. In the last episode, you get a sense of the work dynamic between UX and PM, which should give you some clues on what might go into an interview with PMs. And that is what we're going to look at today. What you can expect from that interview round. What product intuition or management questions can come up? How can you prepare yourself to fluently answer all those product questions? So grab your favorite drink, which I don't seem to have one with me, and let's get into it, yo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Just to set up expectations and some context, not every UX on-site interview will have a round with the PMs. It really depends on the company. I have interviewed with these companies that I've got around with product managers, but these companies, I didn't. One pattern that I found is that if the role is called product designers, it's very likely you're gonna have a 45 minute interview round with a product manager. Duh. If it's a more design driven company or a company that does not have a super metric driven company culture, they might not have one round with the PM. So if you made it to the onsite, it's for a product designer role, it's a metric driven company, and you watched my last video, congratulations, you'll be ready for the new information. Here is a list of 15 PM interview questions. These are the questions that I know of that I personally got asked, or I think they are just worth being included. And now let's go over them one by one. Well, first one, what are some design problems that you identify on other apps, other mobile apps, web apps, and what is your approach to solve them? It's more like a life exercise. You just walk through what you have in mind. You can somewhat prepare for it, but there's no guarantee you're gonna get this question. Next, how do you measure product success? It's a very classic question. As you remember from my last video, product managers care about metric and money. So, tie those in. That's your answer. Next, how do you balance business needs with user needs? So, in the designer world, we are advocating for the users. But in the PM world, they're advocating for the business, for the metrics, for the money. So how do we find that? Find is a bad word to use. How do we balance that? Business need versus user's need. We help solve the user's problem, it should help the business. If the scale is tipped too heavily on one side, then we have to balance it. Next, how do you use qualitative and quantitative data or metrics to inform your decisions? Again, PMs are very qualitative, designers qualitative. So Balance it, use both to make your design decisions, make your choices. Next, before product is shipped, how do you form an hypothesis of what's working and what's not working? So before you launch the product, before you ship the product, you actually have no idea how it's gonna turn out. You can make some assumptions, you can form a hypothesis. So what is your hypothesis based off of? Is it based on user data, user pattern, past history, how other apps perform? And what is pro projection of the outcome? It's gonna increase the revenue per user by 20 bucks. Why 20 bucks? What's your projection? How do you form your hypothesis? And you're likely to get a follow-up question of how do you validate that hypothesis that you have? There are many ways to validate it. One is to just, you know, prototype and test. And second, I shouldn't spoil too much. Let's move on. How did you collaborate with PMs at different stages in a product development cycle? So I've got asked before, this is a really classic one that basically walk me through a day working with your PM in your company. If you have worked before, that should be pretty straightforward. Just describe how you work the PM. Uh, you do this, they do that, and then you go back and forth, you communicate, you collaborate, and you show them design, they give you feedback, and then you challenge their assumptions. You see what I'm going, right? And the next question, which is a little bit more detailed, when you collaborate with different stakeholders, mostly PM that they are looking for here, how do you decide whether to use low fidelity or high fidelity design? And this should be also straightforward. It depends on the stages. And you should know when to use a low fidelity mock-up wireframe prototype to a very interactive, realistic prototype, or even almost like production-ready prototype. Next, can you tell me a challenging project that you have worked on in the past and how you worked with the PM to resolve it? This is a really classic one. I think this is important to understand and it would be great and actually straightforward if you have had this experience before. You have worked with a PM before, and of course, there's no way that is 100% spoof. There are always some hiccups here and there. Very exciting stuff. So how do you do to resolve it? Did you ask for other people's opinion? Did you just talk through it? Did you just uh, prototype more and demo them? Or you find new data or you do testing? There are many ways to resolve this. You just walk through your past experience with them. It should be straightforward. It would be more challenging if you are a new grad that you have no experience with PM, then watch my previous video. Next, 
what's the difference between a design problem and a product problem? This I think is important to know because design problem solves the user's issue or maybe it just solves a UI issue. It might not translate into product to business needs. So that's why you need to understand the difference between both and then look at it from both perspective and, and make your trade off strike your balance. Next, imagine you're a PM and I am a designer. Pick a project and walk me through how we will work together. So you're really putting yourself into the shoes of a PM. This is more or less a live exercise, not really design exercise, but more like a product management exercise. You do it on the fly. If you do it well, that means you understand the role of a PM. That means you basically have no problem with this round. Next, if Uber is free in San Francisco, only San Francisco area, how can Uber generate revenue? Right? Because if it's free, then who's going to pay for Uber's operation? If users are not paying for it, we are taking Uber for free. Who is paying for it? It's really picking your brain, huh? This is product thinking, product intuition. Next, if you believe your design choice is right, how do you influence PMs to believe in your idea? Basically, you're just asking how do you influence other stakeholders, how do you convince them? There are many strategies, tactics, and techniques to go about this. I actually mentioned five in my previous video. Check them out if you like. Kind of corner, description down below. Next, what is your ideal collaboration between PM and design? Again, this should also be easy if you have worked with PM before. Since you have worked with them, you know what is it like. You know what could have been changed. You have your ideal relationship with them. Maybe it's more supportive. Maybe you want them to challenge you even more maybe you want to trust each other more whatever that is and when you have a take on this you can elaborate on this easy question last one the 15th question if you have two months to work on a project what is your timeline like and who will you loop in to work on it after you answer that the second part is what if you only have two weeks for it what is your timeline like who will you collaborate with two months versus two weeks same project how do you do them how do you approach them are they gonna be the same are they gonna be different how same? How different? Yeah, I got this question before. Those are my 15, I need one more hand actually, PM questions. And of course, there's always more to expand to add to the list. If you want a copy of this worksheet, you know the drill, comment down below, email me and I'll send you one. Even though I just gave you 15 questions, when you actually get into a 45 minute interview with a PM, more or less you're not gonna get more than 10 questions. Elaboration, you know, takes time. And in the end, you might not even get more than five questions. Think about it. You have your intro, they have their intro, they have a set of questions, they also have to leave time for you to answer questions. And they want to ask as many questions and get as many detailed answers as possible. So if you think about it, there's not that much time in the session and hence there are not that many questions. So don't panic about you're gonna have to answer 15 questions in a 45 minute session. Well now let's switch perspective. After grilling you with all those questions, the PM who's interviewing you should get a sense of the following five things. Number one, whether the candidate is able to work efficiently and effectively in a product organization setup. Hmm, so I think this candidate Justine can really work with PM really well in this setup. Yes. Number two, can they see both the big picture and small critical details? Number three, do they understand leveraging the strengths and weaknesses of the platforms that they're designing for? Number four, do they stand strong on their opinions or simply just agree with PMs? If they stand strong, how do they try to influence others? Lastly, can I work with this person? Would I enjoy working with them? Can I learn anything from them? If you can answer all the questions from the PM thoughtfully and thoroughly, very likely you're gonna get a yes from all those five areas. If you get those yeses, it's very likely the PM is gonna vote for you in the hiring debrief. Then you should come back to this video, leave a comment, and a celebrate. That's my inconclusive list of questions that you might get asked in an on-site interview with a product manager. For you to better understand how to work with product managers and engineers and answer those collaboration questions with concrete examples, I have used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Choose.